Let's kick things off with some health news. If you're watching this show while you're driving, first of all, don't do that. And second, you may want to hold your breath for this. Hey, we all love that new car smell, right? But according to a new study, that scent could be dangerous. Researchers found the smell carries in it dangerous carcinogens. The measured high levels of the cancer-causing particles in the air and dust inside cars, formaldehyde and benzene, are used by manufacturers in carpets and leather and paints in the cabin. And researchers say drivers with long commutes are likely the most at risk. Oh, man, come on! Why are scientists such killjoys? I mean, just once, I'd like to hear about a new study that says something fun was good for you. But it's always like, oh, puppies give you gonorrhea. I mean, that's where I got mine from. But yes, apparently, new car smell is carcinogenic, which luckily for me isn't a problem because I haven't been able to smell anything in months. Yeah, oh wait. And yeah, it really shouldn't come as a surprise that such an unnatural smell is bad for you. I mean, you'll never find something in a botanical garden that smells like a Kia Sorento. But please, we should be clear. The fact that something emits carcinogens does not mean that it causes cancer. The most dangerous thing about driving is still driving. I mean, think about it. Every single person you know has at some point in their life tripped while walking up the stairs. Everyone has. Now put that person in charge of a 4,000 pound piece of metal going 70 miles an hour. Well, that seems like a bigger problem than a smell that might make you sick in 30 years. Now, obviously, people who are driving old cars have nothing to worry about. Although their next visit to the doctor is gonna be real uncomfortable. The good news is you do not have cancer. The bad news is you're a broke ass bitch. Now there are treatment options, but Lord knows you can't afford any of them, you broke bitch. Moving on from new car smells to the man who's still got that new president smell, Joseph Range Rover Biden. Biden has nominated one of the most diverse cabinets ever. It's got black people, women, Hispanics, Native Americans, and even child robots. But first, Biden's nominations have to be approved by the Senate. And one of Biden's lesser known picks has run into some trouble over her itchy Twitter fingers. Consideration of Neera Tandon to lead the Office of Management and Budget is now frankly in jeopardy after more senators have come out against her. Republicans Rob Portman of Ohio, Susan Collins of Maine, and Mitt Romney of Utah all citing Tandon's past tweets criticizing Republicans. A Romney spokesperson called them mean tweets. You wrote that Susan Collins is, quote, the worst, that Ted, Tom Cotton is a fraud, that vampires have more heart than Ted Cruz. Uh, you called Leader McConnell Moscow Mitch, and Voldemort, um, and on and on. There are still nine pages of tweets about Senator Ted Cruz, for example. Read them! Read the tweets! Read every single one of those tweets! Look, I'm glad to see Melania's Be Best program is finally paying off, but if tweeting mean things about Ted Cruz disqualifies you from serving in government, well, there's not gonna be anyone left to run the country. Even Mitch McConnell would be out in these streets like, uh, Ted Cruz looks like Wolverine after a bad divorce. Send. I resign. It was worth it. Meh. Regardless though, I will say it is really nice to see that Republican senators have finally figured out how to read mean tweets. Because just six months ago, whenever a reporter asked a Republican senator to comment on a Trump tweet, well then, they would say they hadn't seen it, and then jump out of a window, grab onto a ladder attached to a helicopter, and fly out of there. Now, Neera Tandon did apologize for her tweets, but I think that was her biggest mistake. If Donald Trump has taught us anything, it's that doubling down on being an asshole is how you earn Republicans' respect. She should have come into that hearing like, Senator, I never would have called you a sweaty bitch if I had known just how bad you smelled, you smelly-ass sweaty bitch. I vote to confirm. 